Uh, welcome. My name is Johannes Wallman. I'm a faculty member in the School of Music. Uh, welcome to the, I believe this is the fifth of uh, eight public lectures by Wanda Marcus Gonzalez. Uh, Wanda Marcus Gonzalez is uh, the interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary artist in residence this semester. Um, it's, which is a program by the Arts Institute, and it is, uh, um, the residency is uh, hosted within the School of Music and also the Office of uh, Multicultural Arts Initiatives, or MAI. Um, uh, this is a special treat tonight because we also have a very special guest, Tamari Diaz, and, uh, and we're just uh, thrilled to have her here. But without any further ado, please welcome Wanda Marcus Gonzalez. Today, today I was talking to my students, and we were talking about the Cuban symphonic music because uh, everybody uh, thinks that we are only uh, rumberos, but we don't have music theory. And uh, I was talking about two hours about the Cuban symphonic music. Today, we have the opportunity to have on stage here perform for you one of the most important Cuban hip hop artists of the history of our country, the Mari Diaz. She is very special in the sense that she has been able to uh, recreate uh, a kind of hip hop using especially the roots of the Cuban music. And uh, especially today, she's going to be performing music of her last album. She so far uh, uh, released a couple of albums. Uh, the first one, was called A Diario. And uh, during a time of my life, I used to be uh, a dreamer. And uh, when I broke away of my company in London, World Circuit, I started a label in London. I was living in Cuba. And then I was uh, paying certain persons to take care of my company in London. And I had the pleasure to uh, release for Europe, the whole Europe, the first album of Ted Mari, a diario, which was a, a success. We didn't sell that much, because you, you know, for uh, in that times, in the times I made the release, the most of the people was engaged with that. There were no Easter Club. Mm -hmm. I received a lot of mm -hmm. feedback mm -hmm. in terms that they would like to listen to something different. Mm -hmm. Well, we would like to know what else mm -hmm. you do have in your country. I said, well, I'm going to release a couple of albums of the top Cuban artists of the young generation. But unfortunately, they kept on the wave of the Buenos Aires mm -hmm. as a club. And uh, we didn't sell that much, but we, sell, we sold uh, relatively good. And uh, together with the album of the Mari, I released the album of one more uh, great band, great Cuban fusion band that Fisher is an all-stars team, the same as the afro cuban all-stars, my band, with the difference that they use much more elements of the contemporary music. And this is precisely, this, uh, this band was precisely the band of Telmari Diaz. The name of the band is Interactivo. They have come here to America, they have performed, but basically they go to Miami, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> But they go to Miami, and I have told to the young guys in my country, especially my uh, nephew, I, I do have a nephew uh, who is a great singer as well, he wants to go to Miami as well. And uh, my, one of my nieces, who is uh, perhaps the number one singer in Cuba right now, she's very famous, she's not my niece in blood, but in love, know what I mean? And uh, she also wants to go to Miami, and she go normally to Miami every year. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about hip hop, and there are certain, relatively certain, uh, let's say, similarities with the beginning of the hip hop in my country, uh, my, my own story. I used to be a rock and roll player. Uh, I have said that I, I used to be a rock and roll player. I wanted to play rock and roll when I was a kid. When I was about 15 years old, we had a couple of radio stations, one coming from uh, Key West, near to, in Florida, south of Florida, and the other one coming from uh, Little Rock, that I think that's the town 
or the motherland of one of your prisoners, Mr. Clinton. <laughs> and then the, 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 the radio station from uh, Little Rock, they play underground music. And I fell in love with the underground music. We used to wait up until late in the night and then try to tune using uh, Russian radios, <laughs> which was the, the kind of radio that we didn't have in that time. Uh, to listen to rock and roll late, late in the night. There was a program uh, that I loved called Baker Street, live from Baker Street in this uh, psychedelic thing of the underground music. And then the other station was much more commercial. The, the, the radio station in Little Rock was called uh, K-A-A-Y, live from Little Rock in Kansas. And the second one, WQAM. And you know what? About three years ago, I had the pleasure to meet, personally, one of the DJs of that radio station who is a friend of one of the top engineers, let's say mastering engineers here in this country, uh, Mr. Bob Katz. And Bob, in that time, he used to live in Florida, and he was a friend of a guy, and then we met. And I said to him, well, listen, mate, I, I used to listen to your radio station for years. Sometimes in my house, it was impossible to do it, because I, I was living in a building, downtown Havana, very difficult to do it. But I used to move near to the, the border, near to the harbor front, what we call Malecon, Habanero. Mm -hmm. And then near to Malecon, I was able to listen to it. Uh, to the music coming from uh, this radio station. Well, hip hop was the same thing. The guys, especially in a neighborhood in the eastern part of the uh, of Havana, uh, they used to uh, turn on their radios. In the period, in my period, the radios were were VEF, V E F, and uh, in their period, I'm talking about the nineties let's say about mid 90s, 96, 97, they used another kind of radios called Selena, but basically the same thing. And they used to listen to hip hop coming from uh, America, basically from Florida. And they started trying to do the same thing in the same way that I did play rock and roll when I was a kid, following the music of King Crimson, uh, Rolling Stones, uh, Get Through Tool. In this case, they were listening to Public Enemy. Come on, most deaf, and uh, all of this, let's say, first stage of the uh, hip hop here in America, which was the best one, in my opinion, because they did have a message. It wasn't the gangster rap that you did have in this country later, or uh, the commercial hip hop that you do have right now, where, which I don't like that much. <laughs> well, I like some of them. I stopped in Tupac. Shakur. Well, Tupac was gangster rap, but I, I loved him. He was really good, especially the, this California. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> well, so they started on the same way, and uh, Alexandre Rodriguez, who was one of the, let's say, pioneers of the music, he wrote a song explaining exactly this thing, how they did start following these kind of bands, and they tried to create hip hop in Cuba. You have to know that Cuba works in a different way than other countries. In 1961, two years after the triumph of the Cuban Revolution, Fidel Castro had a meeting with the intellectuals. And uh, he gave a speech for the intellectuals, all the great poets, great novelists, all of the intellectuals. And he said one thing. With the revolution, everything. Outside of the revolution, nothing. Nada in absoluto. And uh, during the years, they have been afraid of whatever comes from America. Why? Because you are the enemy. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, for me, it was tough when I was a kid trying to play rock and roll. And play rock and roll. We played basically on the ground. So, 
the hip hop started on the same way. Underground music, they were performing for themselves using cassette tapes, what we had in that in the period. And uh, Alexei describes in his son how he was so happy when his daddy, who was a, a sailor with a Marina Mercante Cubana, brought him a tape player. And then he was able to rap over this kind of music. Then from there, they started trying to create their own things. But basically, they didn't have the chance. We didn't have the technology to make it. So uh, initially, they used backgrounds already made, let's say plastic backgrounds coming from America, uh, through the sailors and the people going abroad. You know, because going abroad was a mystery in my country as well. During the 90s, even during the 90s, was a mystery. And in the 90s, at the same time, we did have big economical problems. We were suffering a period that was uh, called by Fidel, uh, periodo especial en tiempo de paz, which means a uh, special period during peace times. And it was tough. I remember that my wife who is here, she was looking for charcoal because, because uh, he said, well, we have to be prepared for the option zero. Oh. Option zero means nothing. <laughs> and then she looked for charcoal. We did have uh, wood and things like this in our house, just waiting for the option zero. My daughters were really small, and, uh, babies, and then, uh, well, it was tough times. But imagine for me, I grew up with the Cuban Revolution and uh, I've been a red guy all my life. Not in economical terms, in the terms that I do respect things such as independence. Unfortunately, during uh, more than 60 years, we have been, uh, we never were independent, in fact. Americans got power in my country in 1898 when they got inside of the war against Spain. And during a lot of time, we did have a lot of bad presence, corruption, really bad things. No good treatment for, it, for the people, no work, nothing. The Cuban Revolution was the, the hope. Unfortunately, uh, nothing happened after 50 years of revolution as well. But the things got better in certain sense. We did have the chance to go to university. We did have the chance to study. And this is very important. The best, is, well, I'll tell you one thing. And uh, excuse me that I'm talking about so many things, but I'm inspired. You know, I have to admire here. I'm not a rapper. I would like to be a rapper, but I cannot make it. Uh, and uh, you know, during a long time, we were under the foot of the Americans. Right now, everything looks that's going to be better. And uh, unfortunately, during uh, a lot of times, the, our hopes are, in certain sense, finished. But I do trust, I do believe that we, in the world, have the chance to make something better. The way that works, the, the, the way that the societies are working all over the world is not good. And this was one of the things that the rapper wanted to express. We were living the special period in the times of peace, and they want to express the problem and the frustrations of the young generation. So they started at the beginning using this kind of plastic backgrounds. Then there were a couple of guys especially one guy who lives actually in uh, London, I think he's living, Pablo Herrera, who was, let's say, the first Afro-Cuban producer of hip hop. I don't know why, but he found a way to, to buy a computer, uh, software to make the background, and he became like uh, the uh, manager of several uh, hip hop bands, uh, Pablo Herrera. Uh, at the end, uh, more people started trying to find out the way 
to make something different. Of course, there were two, uh, let's say, uh, currents in the hip hop movement in our country. The first one, I'm going to call them orthodoxos. The orthodoxos wanted, wanted to make uh, American hip hop because in their opinion, uh, meanwhile the hip hop is made in Cuba, is approaching Cuban problems, it doesn't matter the music. Well, the music matter in, 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 in just as a background to express their ideas. So they want to be more uh, uh, Americans in certain sense. And there was a second, uh, let's say, current uh, of the people that wanted to mix the elements of the Afro-Cuban music with the hip hop. This is the one that I do prefer, but I do recognize the, 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 the values of some of the people that work uh, normally using this kind of American swing in their music. There's a group that's called La Comisión Depuradora, uh, Purifying Commission. It sounds a like brujería, no? It sounds a like regla de ocho. Well, Comisión Depuradora, they are the members of the Orthodox Carbon. They sound much more American, but they say really nice things. They have been, uh, they have been honest, and they have approached the most of the problems that the youth, and not only the youth, everyone uh, has in our country. So, how they were able to do it? Of course, the government was absolutely against the hip hop, because that hip hop was coming from America. America is the enemy. So this was enemy music. So they didn't want the hip hop. In 1999, a close friend of Fidel Castro went to Cuba. I'm talking about the great actor, singer, and artist, Harry Belafonte. Harry went there because he knew that there were restrictions with the hip hop in our country. So he went there and he asked to talk to Fidel straight, just in front. So he went there to uh, Fidel's uh, office and they started talking about hip hop. And then Belafonte told Fidel, well, listen, Fidel, this is revolutionary music. The thing that these kids are doing and the things that are sounding in America, they are revolutionary people. They are going to... To, to push your struggle against imperialism. And then uh, Fidel said, well, we have to talk a tiny bit more about this. Okay. Uh, that day he had a lot of meetings, a lot of speeches. So he uh, told uh, Belafonte, well, you, you have to come with me and later we are going to talk. Fidel was a really strong guy. I remember that he used to work uh, about 18, 19, up to 20 hours a day. He was a monster. Right now, he's an old guy, but I'm going to be an old guy as well. Well, in fact, I'm already an old guy. Me estoy poniendo viejo. Well, listen, ladies and gentlemen. And then, uh, Belafonte and Fidel, they went to, uh, to several meetings, several places, Fidel and Belafonte. Even Fidel invited Belafonte to talk to the, in a, it was a uh, school of medicine, I think. We do have a great medicine school in our country. And uh, he also talked to the people, uh, Belafonte as well. And then 11 hours later, they get back home uh, to the office and Vidal said, well, right now we're going to start talking about hip hop. And then Belafonte convinced him that the hip hop was a valid expression a valid cultural expression of the uh, Americans, uh, but uh, should be valid to have uh, the spirit of a hip hop who is a revolutionary art in our country. And then he convinced Fidel to accept the hip hop and then no more restrictions for the hip hoppers in our country for a short period. <laughs> During more or less a couple of years, everything worked uh, properly. 
But then, you know, in our country, I have to explain to you how our country works. Our country works in this way. There's a ministry of culture. Normally, the ministry of culture in every country takes care of the, uh, let's say, symphonic music, uh, cultural things, and things like that. But from the ministry of culture, we have several vice ministers. I don't know if this is a word. If it is not, I don't mind. But you do understand what I mean, right? Do you? Okay, cool. And then, every one of these departments, let's say, approaches a different aspect of the culture. So, in terms of the music, we have the Instituto Cubano de la Musica, which is the one that takes care of the music. But then, in the Instituto Cubano de la Musica, there are several bureaucrats in there, a lot of them, and then after the Instituto Cubano de la Musica, we have different uh, empresas musicales, uh, enterprises. I don't know if this is a proper word, but I suppose that yes. Well, musical enterprises, and then in the musical uh, enterprises, we do have several bureaucrats as well. But what the problem after the nineties? when began uh, the explosion of the tourism and the necessity of making money, because we needed money in order to support ourselves, everybody was behind the money. I remember that once Fidel, just in front of the people, tell them, you are capitalistas de pacotilla. I don't know how to translate it, but uh, fake capitalists. And, uh, well, this Empresas work uh, in this way. So what they did was to create a special empresa for the hip hop. It happened in 2000, late 2001. The first Cuban hip hop empresa, which was called Agencia Cubana de Rap, <laughs> because uh, they only talk. Uh, uh, we're talking about the more commercial. Uh, think of the hip hop culture, not about graffiti, but you cannot make graffiti or paint the walls in Cuba, that's forbidden. You can do it on the ground, and, uh, or asking for the permission to certain authorities of the neighborhood and blah, blah, blah. There are, for, for example, there is a lot of graffiti in my neighborhood. I'm coming from Alamar, which was the model land of the hip hop in my country, Alamar. And there's a lot of graffiti because uh, Alamar is made in the style of, uh, let's say, outside uh, Cheremetievo, Cheremetievo Airport in, in uh, Moscow, uh, outside the Cheremetievo. So, all buildings the same size, gray, dark, awful. So, in certain parts of Alamar, they allow to use graffiti you know, to make it uh, better. But at the end, the most important for them was the MCN. And then they created this enterprise, which was called Agencia Cubana de Rap. There was a huge underground movement. And then Agencia Cubana de Rap, because it was a part of the Ministry of Culture, they cannot deal with the amount of rappers. We did have more than 100 groups of hip hop in, in, in our country. And uh, especially in Havana, because Havana was the model land of hip hop culture in our country. So they took only a few uh, groups and then the rest of the guys were outside. They kept being on the ground. And then there was one more organization which was one of the legs. Uh, in theory, was a non-governmental organization. But in fact, it was uh, subordinated to the youth, Communist Youth Union, to the Communist Party. And the name of this uh, uh, organization was Asociación Hermanos Saiz, named and, uh, under a couple of great poets from Pina del Rio that were killed during the times of the fightings the struggle against the dictatorship of Batista.
Asociación, sorry, Hermanos Saiz. So, the underground hip hop was at the, this uh, uh, Hermanos Saiz organization, and just a few groups were at the Agencia Cubana de Rap. But what happened? We are talking about 2002. In 2002, arrived the reggaeton to Cuba. <laughs> and when the reggaeton came, a lot of the original hip hop artists, they moved to reggaeton. Why? Because reggaeton is easier. You don't have to think in order to create a lyric or to write a lyric. It's just move the ass and that's it. <laughs> and then they, they made it. I remember that one of the first reggaeton uh, bands in our country was uh, Cubanitos 20 Cedo. Very good music. Well, the music was danceable, the music was exciting, but it wasn't hip hop. It wasn't anymore what they uh, had. So in this moment started the decay of the hip hop uh, in our country. And the uh, emergence, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it properly, but I suppose that you don't understand, of the uh, reggaeton in our country. Right now, we are talking about 2002, right? 13 years later, still reggaeton is the number one music in our country. There's a difference between the Cuban reggaeton and the reggaeton made everywhere else in the world. Our reggaeton is much more creative. It's different. They try to make arrangements. They make arrangements. They write music. They use brass sections. And they use the, all of this stuff. It's different. It's not Daddy Yankee. It's something uh, uh, better. In my opinion, in my personal opinion, and, uh, well, this was the beginning of the end of the hip hop. But many people kept uh, with the hip hop culture, the hip hop music, and the hip hop art. One of them, of course, is the money. And uh, they tried to make uh, something intellectual. So hip hop turned from being a kind of, in certain sense, uh, fashion to become something intellectual where they express their poetry in a direct way. There are two ways to do it. We have the people aligned and the dissidents. In 2007 was created a, an underground group which is precisely Comisión Depuradora, the Purifying uh, Commission, and then they were really aggressive because they were talking the problems of the Cuban society, the real problems of the youth. And they, they were on the ground, uh, they were an underground group. I'm talking about people like Papa Umbertico, Silvito El Libre, who by the way is the son of one of the greatest Cuban songwriters, Silvio Rodriguez. Silvito El Libre, Papa Umbertico, and all of these rappers, they were saying things really uh, important, and they were, they were really, really popular as well. In the other side, there are people that normally works expressing the beautiful things of a life, and that try to mix the elements of the Afro-Cuban culture with the hip hop. I think that this is the, the valid position for a Cuban musician. It's not enough that you are uh, composing, that you are creating hip hop in your country. The only way to make it is try to use the elements that define your country, that define your, uh, uh, let's say, culture, and then make it from there. Uh, this is my opinion, my personal opinion. And uh, we do have several hip hop artists in this uh, kind of way. They have been mixing jazz, pure jazz, jazz quintet, something like this, Afro-Cuban drums, using Afro-Cuban patterns. Even when rapping, 
using Afro-Cuban patterns because we do have something that's called the triplet, the Cuban triplet. And then they use the Cuban triplet. Sometimes they use the triplet, the normal uh, Western triplet, but with the, the normal delay that we use when, the, when we are uh, uh, reading the music. In Cuba, uh, I told you once, uh, we uh, normally, we write the music in one way and then we read the music in another way. So they use these kind of elements in the, the music that they do and uh, this is uh, very important. One of these artists is the Mari Diaz. And uh, even when unfortunately this commercialism of the uh, different, uh, let's say, layers, layers of the uh, culture structures in Cuba uh, was damaged or damaged the hip hop, we still do have hip hop. Of course, reggaeton is much more famous. They do have big cars. They live, uh, <laughs> they live different. They were the substitutes of the old guys of the Buena Vista Social Club in my, in my country. But uh, at the end, everything is all right. I remember that the first albums of this kind of artists, let's say, I, I, I suppose that uh, uh, the best, one of the best albums was released in 1999 and it does have a cover of Shan Chan that we recorded back in 1997. It was an album by Orichas. Orichas was the, the first international hip hop band in the history of our country. Then uh, in their second album, they didn't use precisely this kind of retro music, but they use some more things that perhaps makes you remember the old times, like the scratch of the old vinyl albums and this kind of uh, things. Uh, Orichas was a great band. Right now they cannot rap anymore because you have to be young. And they, they, are, they are in their late 40s, all of them. I, I found Russo. Russo is, my, uh, is one of the members of the band, a close friend of mine. A sonero. Do you know, because Orisha did something different. Instead of having uh, an R&B singer, like in the hip hop, they look for a sonero. So it's a guy that improvises above the music. And uh, Russo, I found Russo, and I said, well, Russo, you cannot rap anymore. You cannot be in the band anymore because you are becoming an old guy. So you cannot make it. You have, for hip hop, you have to be young and beautiful. <laughs> if you are not a handsome guy, you cannot make it. And Russo said, well, that's okay. I'm coming back to Cuba. They were living in France for, uh, for, for a long time. So this is basically the history of the hip hop in our country. Right now, we do have much more bands. There are bands that use hip hop in another kind of arrangements. Let's say timba which is the popular danceable Cuban music, and they use a rapper on top. There are jazz bands that use a rapper on top. For example, Telmari, she's the rapper of Interactivo. Interactivo is the fusion band I was talking about before. They play basically jazz. They are jazz players. Uh, because they are a fusion band, sometimes they fusion too much, and they use, uh, in the same arrangement, because they are so talented. They, they are unbelievable. So the, the arrangements sometimes have a mix of everything, a little bit of everything, and then the Mario on top, uh, she's the poet. And this kind of combination is uh, extraordinary. Last time I, I, I saw them was in uh, in Havana, in a concert featuring the Mario, and uh, it was uh, something unforgettable. And uh, this is the history, basically the history of the hip in our country. There were uh, some bands of La Comisión de Puradora and, uh, for example, Adianos. Adianos was a, a great band. Unfortunately, some of these bands are disbanding. Some of these groups are disbanding. They are living, uh, right now, as far as I know, one of the Adianos is living in Miami. They were a duet. And one of the Adianos in Miami and the other one is in St. Petersburg, in, uh, near to uh, Tampa, Florida. So they left the country as well. I don't know, but for certain reason everybody is leaving. 
and this is the time I want to come back. <laughs> Go back to where you were before. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you to my sister, the great jazz poet, Tedmari Diaz. Donde está Tedmari? Stop. We have to look for Tedmari. Se están cambiando de ropa. This is a problem with the women. Well, uh, <laughs> well, you know, I'm worse. I'm worse. And I have my wife and my daughters. They take care of me. They, uh, they take a lot of care of me. But anyway, and, uh, many times I'm, I'm late as well. Yeah, the money is coming up. The money, ya viene. Que money, día. She, 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 you know what? She is one of my favorite artists, and I love her. I was talking to you about when I uh, was able to release her, her first album in Europe. Her first album was the Cuba Disco Award. Cuba Disco is like your Grammys, with the difference. That's not commercial at all. So the music, when you got a Cuba Disco, this is the real thing. There's no money, no people lobbying around, because I know how it works the, the Grammys. I, I've been there. I've been there, and I know the lobby, how it works. Of course, uh, there are great awards as well, really serious music. And America is a serious country. I'm a fan of Bernstein, Aaron Copeland, and uh, Steely Dan. <laughs> well, we're going to talk a tiny bit. I was explaining them who you are and uh, how we met. And uh, my first question, we are going to be talking, right? Yeah, if yeah. you do have another question, you can ask <laughs> the question. There's no problem. This is something formal. Well, explain me your beginnings. How did you get into the hip hop? <clears throat> Good afternoon, everybody. Um, Microphone. Huh? Okay. I'm looking for the old one. <laughs> Another one? Uh, I don't know if the cable is in the. No importa, lo movemos para aquí. Yeah, yeah. We share. In Cuba, we actually. We have been sharing. When I start, we have like a very few microphones. So we were four and six, and we have to. Maestro. One and one. And and, you know, we have to do the vocals, everybody together, or the chorus was really crazy and experimental <laughs> uh, part of my work. But let me say that, first of all, I, um, even that I, I feel like a, I, I owe uh, my way of communication to the hip hop movement, um, uh, I wanted to be a journalist, that's why it, uh, in a very complicated country, surrealistic country. So, <laughs> to be a journalist, it, it brings a lot of questions and censorships and, oh my God, we can write a book about it. So, um, I don't know, for some reason I said, okay, oh, you know what, I don't, I don't think I, I can be a journalist. Like, how am I gonna deal with all these old journalists from the grandma who went to Rebel, they yeah. get the chance to deal with them. <laughs> So um, I was I was completely sure that I wanted to communicate. That's what I think I uh, is my passion. It's what I do, and I discovered if I have a microphone in Cuba and people, you know, you can bring the audience. Actually, you have a kind of a power in Cuba. So for some reason, I started with a microphone. The first time that I took a microphone in my my hands was with a friend of mine, with a DJ. It was actually. A, a, an electronic underground movement in Havana. Uh, of course, it was forbidden parties that we have to organize, and then we have to run away because it is which up and it was a crazy experience. And uh, I don't know how, but I was kind of promoting these parties, and 
and my friends were the DJs and one day I always tried to tell them, hey, change that music, why you don't put more uh, fusion of Cuban music and always post the Cuban music around because it, that's the music that I listen at home. Um, and then my friend Joy Van said, why you don't take the microphone and just leave me alone? Like, if you have something to say, say it to the people, but stop bothering me. <laughs> <laughs> so I took the microphone and I love to write, that's what I do, that's my, my exercise, I can tell, like, that's what I like to do. I was writing every day and I have like a diary, we were in the middle of the special period in Cuba, we didn't have even paper for the, the newspaper, so there's no news, not the real ones. Um, so, I start to, to read, I don't know, I was nervous, so I start like to read all the, como la cartelera, or the, the cultural information that what was going on in the music and in the art scene in Cuba at that moment. So it was kind of a, of a way to, to, to explain, to, to, I don't know, to communicate, to tell to people what is going on that you don't know because no one knows. Like uh, this band is playing right there, we have this theater, this play, you know, uh, at this theater or this band, this rumba pro uh, project and so I started to say that because I was nervous, I didn't know what to do. And after that, I finished and I passed and I have like a poetry, something that I wrote and I started to do it at the same time with the rhythm. So that was the first experience. After that, I realized that I really liked that. Like, it was great. I, one day that with my friend, Joey Van, he was playing music and someone lost his sunglasses. He's right now one of the most uh, successful and famous painters for the, camp the carpenters, the carpenters. And someone stole his glasses, or he lost his glasses because he was really drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and I start to make it like a melody, like a song, and I start to repeat, please, give them back. You know, his sunglasses, he really needed it, you know? If you, like, in a way, like, to, to say, like, please, you know, he's, this guy needs to paint tomorrow, you know, he, he, he needs to, to, to be doing his job, he's gonna lose his job if he doesn't, so I don't know, for some reason I touched the hair of someone and they give him back the hair. So that, that was the day I said, okay, this is working actually. People listen to me and it's a way to do it. That wasn't good. But no, but it happens, it was real. Uh, and after that I started with a project, it's called Free Hole Negro. It sounds it's Free Hole. Free Hole Negro. Negro in English. Don't mean it. <laughs> was like, a, you know, the, like the free holes, like attracts energy and actually we felt at the moment that we were in a very black hole in Cuba. But it sounds like a free hole nail, like a black bean, so at the same time it was free hole. And Hawking's so, black beans. <laughs> so yeah, we have to take a lot of jokes about it, but we really like it was something, something different. And this was a project that... Um, very special for me because it was my first, my first band, my first project. We were audiovisuals too because two of the of the rappers they were animators from from Ikai. Uh, so for them, music was like a another way to express. And and I was a female rapper in Cuba, surrendered by guys that they allowed me to be the leader of the band. And it was difficult. Yeah, of course. Like, I don't know who takes more... I don't know who takes it. Me or the guys that were actually <laughs> rapping with me because everybody was like, what she's doing? Like, uh, that moment, females in hip-hop, in rap, they were doing back vocals, they were dancing with their bodies, or the videos, you know how it is. Check your and body. It, check your body, or the... Um, of course, in Cuba they try, you know, they imitate the Cuba, the, the American hip -hop. hip hop. Even the backgrounds, they were made it. They 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 recycle their background from American rappers, and they just put down the voice and they rap on top of that, things like that. And and then suddenly Frijonero, we decide like, okay, we don't have anyone to do backgrounds. We don't have any money. We don't have a DJ. So what we don't play with music, with musicians. Actually, we have a lot of friends. We have a lot of musicians that they, they would love to play with us. And if they don't love, well, they would play because they're our friends. So that's, this is how Frijol Negro brings a different perspective 
in, in hip hop. First, because we play with, with, with musicians, and, and also because they have a female rapper that doesn't pretend to be a behave like a man. <laughs> And you know, keep my femininity because this is who I am and why I have to change to play with the standards that they have. Or so it was really hard because they consider us like we were commercial hip hop. They mean by commercial that the fact that you want to mix with rhythms from your own country, and we are trying to make some money out of that. For me, and they were the underground movement because they have no resource, resources and they do the pure hip hop because it was with the DJ and, and the MC. Um, our response was, well, if you don't want us in your rap movement, well, we go you know, somewhere else. Uh, but no, we, we said at the beginning, but, but then I say, well, if we, if we don't keep trying with our music and we make them understand that this is what we're doing is something that is even, for me, was logic. Like, why I'm not going to enrich my music with Cuban elements? We have a special, very beautiful, beautiful music, and why we don't want to add those elements to, to our, our way of expression? Uh, and, and then was the hip hop, the, the, the hip hop festival, the rap festival in Alamar, and we show up with our musicians, and they go crazy because they don't have, they say they don't have equipment, they don't have anything. We pay for everything. We look, we ask. We don't, in Cuba, when you say you pay, it's actually like you ask to a friend. Of you. Yeah, to find out. To, because it's not about the money you have; the, it's the, the relationships that you can. The word is resolver. Resolver. That's, resolver. that's the most important verb in Cuba: is yeah. resolver. Resolver. And the element that follows uh, resolver is almost la javita. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, with the bag. With the Small bag. Small bag. Small bag. So you can. So you can. <laughs> yeah. Now, there's only one question because. Uh, we would like to listen to Tamari, yep. and uh, I'm, I'm sorry, oh, but I talk too much. Oh, we're at 12 too. Yeah, yeah, we Both are. Both of us, we can be here all night talking about, you know. We are the sons of Yemaya. We, are, <laughs> we talk too much. Well, listen, there's only one question. Uh, in your first album, well, there are two questions, I'm sorry. The first thing, I have heard you talking about the relationship of how near are certain styles of the Afro-Cuban music with the hip hop. And you have talked about Punto Cubano, which is an improvised way, uh, very near to the, uh, let's say, uh, the Spanish inheritance of uh, the Afro-Cuban music. And you have talked about the roosters struggle of the changuiceros and the rumberos. How do you see this? How do you, do you see the link between this kind of music, Afro-Cuban music, and the hip hop? Um, well, first, because, first of all, because they are part of our culture, and I was trying to find forms of improvisation that we have in our culture that, that we can you know, add and, and, and reach you know, a little bit more like uh, the hip hop, because I was like, a, even that I, I listened to hip hop music, that, that wasn't the music that, that I listened all the time. And, and so uh, I find out, like, okay, this is the same, with, but with different rhythm, with different music. Like uh, the improvisation that they do, the controversy that is, uh, is the, the, the folk music from Cuba, uh, they have a battle of improvisation. And it's very, it's very you know, curious because. Uh, some, some people think that they 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 write they they, they write it, no they wrote it before, and the thing is that they have like a like a decima, no they have a decima that is a, is a form from that, that have like a ten verse. Yeah, they know what a decima. Yeah, is. so they have like a ten verse, but the, the the funny thing is like the 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 next one have to start his improvisation with the last sentence of the previous person that is. Uh, improvis improvising, so there's no way that you can <laughs> that you can write something because you don't know what the op your opponent is gonna say. So I took I I I learned a lot from from that and and f I connect that with the with the roosters in the Shangui because they 
they do something very similar, and, and I connect that with the Afro-Cuban Moyuba, because actually when, when Esantero, blah, 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 when they are in front of you, invoking a chair, like a, um, revisando, <laughs> I don't know if I can just say this. Uh, what they do, what they, they, they call it, it's called Moyuba, and it, it's in a verb, Moyuba. What they're doing is, is a way for me, is a way of rap, but in Yoruba. So I took all those elements because I was trying to to mix it and and see what happened. What happened if you if you give these these elements and you give it to someone that is able to rap and ha is able to improvise? But what will happen? So I'm still working on it. By the way, it's not that easy uh, because with the reggaeton movement and everything, the hip hop in Cuba is being very very you know. It's almost the, not disappear, but it, it, it's not that it's not that powerful, you know. Like the way that they shut it down, the 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 rap, the Amar rap festival, because it brings a lot of press from outside. And that's actually, I think they were the journal, the real journalists at that moment in Cuba because they were telling the truth, what will happen, what, what our problems, solutions, the real situation, and they they got scared and they create a agency, you know, the rap agency. We don't have a song agency, we, you know, we don't have a rock and roll agency, we don't have a Changui Roomba agency, but we have a rap agency. <laughs> so I never I never played that game, of course I'm not part of the of the agency. They, they, I didn't tell you, but they actually asked me if I want to be the, the vice president. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They I said, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. First, because yeah. they, they, they're Keep up movement gave me a lot of bad you know, moments, and that I, that I really appreciate because it, it, because of their attitude, I decided to do something different, and I started to play with musicians and be into jazz and trying to to, to create like a poetry as an as another instrument that improvise, you know, among jazz musicians or soneros musicians or rumba musicians. It doesn't matter. It's just to use, uh, uh, like a like a poetry uh, as a as a as a weapon, as a way of, of communication. Uh, no matter no matter which style it could be, and and well, that in my second album, Libre, that's that's what connects every song. Is the Moyuba for one. I went. I, I even went to the last. Uh, how do I say that? The, uh, yeah, the last uh, Taino's uh, colony. Well, uh, we, we do have uh, our neighborhood uh, that we do have one specialist in uh, the Taino's nearby. So I, I went there trying to, you know, to find out what were the, the music, the, yeah, trying to see well, what was the way that they do, how this improvisation came. And it's always some, something so positive that I think that we also need in our music, in our, especially in hip hop. Sometimes I think it's too, too much criticized, and you don't bring any solution. Like, come on, we know that we already, you know, everything is so bad and everything. But what what we can do, you know, to, to make this world better? What we can do to find, you know, a way to be a better person, not just to tell me what's going on because I'm not blind. Everybody knows what's going on. Exactly. So. Well, um, that was one of my, I guess, missions, and the other one is trying to encourage women to be uh, hip hop artists. And I may say that I'm very happy with the result because right now we have a lot of female rappers in Cuba, a lot of graffiti artists, you know, uh, b boys, b girls. I don't know if the term exists, but I. <laughs> b girls, yeah. b girls, b girls. Okay, yeah. <laughs> because it, it's different in Spanish. So big boys, big girls. We have female uh, DJs, and and right now is I think it's something that is impossible to stop at the moment. And and I'm very happy that you know, even they 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 keep saying that they do something more pure. Or I, I don't question them or anyone. I just I I don't want to I don't want them, anyone frame me. So that's why I just try to communicate, which is. Uh, my passion, my goal, what I really enjoy in life. That's your life. Uh, he does have a question. Hey, uh, thank you guys both for being here. It's uh, such a wonderful discussion. I want to thank you guys and also the organizers. My name is Professor D. I'm a hip-hop artist and a new uh, professor here at the university. 
And uh, I have one question for both of you. I'll throw out a top number of topics you're welcome to just touch on, whichever uh, interests you mo most. Uh, so it, you were talking about a particular festival, and I missed the name and how it related to the Cuban Rap Agency, and it seemed to be sort of a critique of the, of the agency. So I just wanted a little bit of clarification on that. And whether or not, and maybe this is a separate question or maybe it's related, um, uh, if black, the Black August uh, concerts and series uh, are related to that festival. Um, and, uh, and relatedly, what do you think about the situation with uh, the political exiles, the, the black political exiles that we have in Cuba, ex-Black Panthers, Black Liberation Army, with the new situation, the new relations with the US that, uh, that you mentioned earlier? So that was my question for you. Um, no, and, number one, I'm going to offer. Uh, Hold on, because it's another yeah, question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very simple. <laughs> and it's a very simple. It's a very simple like thing. We go together. Uh, you gave us an excellent, uh, uh, interesting history of Cuba, uh, Cuban hip hop. You didn't mention so much the relation of Cuban hip hop and race, which is a, which is, has been a contentious thing. And I wonder if you want to say anything about a, a very interesting uh, cap to. The comment, uh, the the opening story about Belafonte, um, which is a, which is an excellent and such an important uh, story to know about not just Cuban hip hop mm -hmm. but global hip hop studies, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. very important. But then also a very very interesting development. I wonder if you want to say anything about it. Is uh, uh, is the uh, supposed CIA funding of what's the group called Los uh, Aldeanos? Yeah, well, but, uh, yeah, well, about five my question, right? Right? I don't, how, how, how can I know if that's true or not? Um, I don't think so. Yes, I want to answer one and a half people. Oh, with eight. Yes. yes. Um, well, like I said, they we have this hip hop festival that, of course, we, we I can I can say like a, there were a moment that uh, Asata and Ahanda, ex Black Panthers in Cuba. They were really interested in the hip hop movement because they see they were conscious, yes. you know, rappers that they really want to to bring, you know, all, all the energy. And, and I think they they have like a like a workshop that they, you know, uh, try to encourage <coughs> new, you know, rappers to bring and do the the festival. I don't think that they they support the festival in, in a way of, I mean. But they brought part, uh, they they brought most of the and all of these guys. Uh, they, they, they brought the guys, they, they were the link in order to bring to the uh, Alamar Jazz Festival uh, these guys from America, most deaf and uh, common and all of them. Uh, and the roots, some, also the roots. Yeah, but uh, basically, uh, there's one more thing. Well, uh, you, you do have a lot of questions, and uh, we have no time, but we can talk a tiny bit later. But in regards to race, this is Jeffrey Baker, man. We do have racial problems in Cuba, but it's not what Jim Robinson wrote or what Geoffrey Baker wrote. It's not, the problem is not that bad. Of no. course, after the, 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 you know, the, uh, the war of 1898, you know, we did have slavery in our country up to 1886. So the black people, the black population didn't have enough uh, let's say development, and then when the uh, republic started, they were in a, in a worse position. But what happened from the 90s, what happened? Many of the, uh, let's say, black guys, they didn't want to study anymore, man. You are killing yourself. You have to study. And I'm telling you, I'm talking to you from here, because I do have people in my family, excellent, very smart, intelligent, young guys. I, they didn't want to, 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 to study. They didn't want to make it. If you don't go to university, you are going to do nothing and you have to be hanging uh, things in the street in the construction. If you are ready, if you are prepared, everything is going to be better. I don't, I'm not saying that we don't have racism in our country. In fact, she wrote a song, uh, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago, and the song said, Nosotros los negros finos, we, uh, let's say, special black guys, hemos decidido, we have decided, no bailar más rumba. 
this was the, 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 the song that she wrote in that time. I'd like to ask more Rumba, like, because it was a cliche, like if you are black, this is the music that you do, this is, the, this is what you do, this is how you behave, this is what you belong. So we were like a, uh, like a, we were, you know, that was our message, like a, todos los negros feel, like a, we decide not to play more, more rumba. But at the back of our background was a mix at the back, was a rumba there, because we love rumba too. Of course. It's just like, a, you know, don't, don't just try to make a, and a there's, there's a, yeah, like a cliche. And the, the other song, like a, you like it too, from Morano, that say, Quien tiro la tiza, el negro es. No fue el hijo del doctor, fue el negro es. They say, like when you are at school, how you say the shark. the sharks? Shark. Okay. okay, who threw a shark? Black guy. The black guy. Yeah. The black guy is no, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't the doctor song. No, no, no. It was the black guy. So, and what is? It's a funny way to 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 also you know to also say and and protest against that because also in music, there's always a lot. It's a lot of. He says, I, I may say, this. if you are black, you, you, you should play this, you are not good for that, you, you can play classical, or if they see a black guy, they say, oh yeah, he play drums, he play percussion. <laughs> That's what he does. So, of course, we, we do have a lot of, um, a lot of racial uh, problems. problems. But no, it's not America. Definitely no. Never. Definitely not. Definitely, definitely not. Um, you know, it's not the same thing. And at the school, everybody, I mean, you can say, I'm not saying that it doesn't exist, but at the same time, I, I think like, uh, you know, the, the children, you know, we are all mixed, we play together, we don't have that problem. It's actually always the parents, all, always like an old generation, I may say, maybe, I don't know, that is like, hey, what are you doing with that? Oh, you're white and you're black. In my family, when I start, you couldn't imagine, he would say, they, would, they, they want me to be a lawyer, I study at the very science school in Cuba, like a very important, like La Lenin and everything, and I was like, why are you doing rapping with all those niggers? I said, what? what? Was it was one of you know part of my family? I, I'm ashamed of that, but they they were really skeptical. Like, what are you doing? You're wasting your time, your future. And then, well, thank God I won a Cuba Disco Award, and then I can show it to my family and I say, <laughs> look, yeah. I didn't go to university, but at least it looks like I'm not that bad in what I do. Look at the price, and I give it to my family. <laughs> so after that. Yeah, but after I won the Cuba Disco Award, not with my own album, just the, with Interactivo, because I may say that I'm also part of a very special project called Interactivo, which is an ecumenic project, which the ideas of everyone means the same and matter the same. It's very difficult in Cuba, because the music is always a leader with the band, and it's different. And, and it's a beautiful project. We are like family. We've been collaborating for many, many years, like uh, 15 years now. And, and, and I learned a lot, and I think I grew up a lot. And it, it gives me some peace of mind about my work because I was kind of doubting, well, what am I doing with this you know, hip hop thing? They don't want me in the rap movement. This is what I like, and then well, with interactive, I could be myself and be happy and represent poetry and, and rap uh, among musicians that they were all superstars, that everybody had their own career, super talent, and at the same time, very humble. Yeah, humble. 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 Very humble people, and, and those, are my, those are my family. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. <laughs> thank you indeed. We don't have more time because uh, we would like to listen to Talmadi. <laughs> Do you? Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you have talked to Talmadi. She was talking to you. We would like to introduce you uh, the other band member, which is like a kind of niece because uh, her man is really, really close friend. Something that I knew today. I didn't know it. So, ladies and gentlemen, together with the Mari Diaz, Brenda. Okay, we go.
ini. No creo que el Rocky le haya dicho y tú que viene en mi cabeza va a ser un eco. Y para informar te digo quién es quién de Panteón de Orúa. En el Panteón de Orúa y el cristiano también, ¿oíste? Por lo que es Dios grande, gran creador. Por lo que es energía vital, el sol es por tu madre, la naturaleza. Los cuatro elementos, la misma belleza. El niño de Atocha, San Antonio Pauda. El ánimo solo de después se habla. San Alberto, llegó tu zapato San Pedro. Vamos juntos en 
de Madrid y se ha acordado mi micro 10 de Madrid Paz hace más que igual a la vida de micro 10 el truco plante, si tú lo complaces si tú dudes todo lo que no me complaces conozco tu rostro, lo conozco que no me frases da tu pase todo de lo que en el alma nace no tengo más espacio, yo tengo que presecho pero sigo en 26, fe y tu fe perdiendo el pecho Cultura dura y pura como la pura que han hecho, hacer nacer al cual no han podido dar el pecho. Mucha, mira, la rima es mucha, y en Cuba como se escucha. Mucha, la rima es mucha, hay a si no lo escucha. Tu psiquis mal huevo, si se da seguro, tu psiquis mi esencia, lo que represento. My way to embrace, freedom, liberation, bendita poesía que llevo dentro. Si quis mal huevo, mi voz es para el pecho. Mi esencia es love, love. My way to embrace, freedom, liberation, bendita poesía que llevo dentro. Si quis mal huevo, mi voz es para el pecho. Mi esencia es love, love. My way to embrace, freedom, liberation, bendita poesía que llevo dentro.
levanto, por eso canto, la voz sudando que rompe el pecho, raíz de piel, te me dejo aquí en la tierra, negra de selva, negra de ser. Esta la rumba viene de tumba, que tiene esencia de lo que somos, precisa de ella, está bien alerta, mente despierta, juega la fiesta, es más profundo, parece risa, es en la guerra. Tanto frío, soy libertad, autenticidad, pero la mierda, que esto no es suerte, es claridad. Saco la vida y te voy para afuera, con soltura, premura, divina, sabrosura, para cantarte, para estrenarme, para hacerme burba. A la magia negra, negra de cepa, negra de ser, negra de más. Echarle bomba, echarle fe, barrer, barrer, barrer en la sombra. Me alumbro, voto cordura, que no dice años, es más sensato. Andar de cárcel, sé yo misma, de calzarme para ser una extraña. Ando sin rumbo, sin problema, fuera de esquemas comerciales. Controversia, supremacía, media vuelta. ¡Salida! Pregunta quiénes somos, no 
mucho menos quiénes fuimos. ¿En dónde nacimos? ¿Qué hicimos que sobrevivimos? No, no te preocupes por mí. Lo importante no es cómo llegamos, sino que estamos aquí. Si es lo que representamos, a cada momento quiero ser libre por el viento, por el pavimento. Escucha cómo suena el mestizaje de esta lengua sublevada. Agua ocha, 
vida, mi amor, que equivocado. Que equivocado. Que equivocado estás de la vida, mi amor, que equivocado. Que equivocado estás de la vida, mi amor, que equivocado. Tanto tiempo de traer la bebida, mi amor, hay que mareado. Que me quería, que cielo, que enamorado. No me digas, que equivocado.